enjoying this series on the music of the season 2014, we've come to the last opera of this season, Jules Massenet's Don Quixote, or Don Quixote, based on the great 16th century epic novel by Miguel Cervantes. We began the series talking about the use of music in opera to communicate emotions and passions in the drama at the center of Leon Cavallo's Pagliacci. We discussed the definition of bel canto and how we can hear a wonderful example of that style in Donizetti's The Elixir of Love. And last time we took a, a very close look at the importance of rhythm in creating music that communicates character in Verdi's Un Ballo in Mascara, a masked ball. Today we move to the 20th century, well, the very early 20th century, to talk about this Spanish-inflected opera about the adventures of everyone's favorite knight errant, Don Quixote. I've spoken about how French opera composers love to go all Spanish on us, think Bizet's Carmen, so I'm not going to really deal with that today. I've done that before. What I'd like to focus on is how composers go about setting the scene in opera, creating the perfect atmosphere, or what I like to call a sonic environment for the drama that's about to unfold. We dealt with that just a little bit in the segment on Pagliacci because, frankly, the composer Leon Cavallo is so good at it. But Massenet, working about ten years after Leon Cavallo, is a master at scene setting, and Don Quixote is filled with examples. What we're talking about is the music that a composer decides to use for the first few moments of each scene, or in this case, at the very beginning of each act. There are five short acts in Don Quixote. Now, don't let that make you nervous. It only amounts to about a total of two hours of music. Each act begins differently, reflecting where we are in the story, whose act it is, in other words, who are the featured characters at the beginning of the act, and even, well, when it is. Is it morning, afternoon, evening? Yes, even those things, all those things, can be communicated in music. Let's take a look and listen to some of these scene settings in order to see just how effective Massenet is. Act 1 opens in a town square where a fiesta or fair is being held, so it's filled with people dancing, partying, bustling about. Remembering that not only does the composer have to express the activity that we'll see on stage as soon as the curtain goes up, we're also in Spain. So yes, there needs to be a kind of Spanish flair to what's going on, right? Here's the music Massenet has created for this very important initial statement of where in the world we are. music, the strong rhythmic drive, the Spanish flair, it all tells us everything we need to know at the beginning of the opera. Let's listen to a bit of what this music sounds like in its orchestral version from a recording of Don Quixote.
direction at the opening of the second act tells us that Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, his sidekick, are out in open country. It also tells us that it's dawn, but further, it's not just any old dawn, it's a misty dawn. What kind of musical choices, rhythmic, melodic, instrumental, are going to communicate something so specific to us? Well, first of all, the tempo is slow as you'd expect of yourself and the rest of the world when we're waking up in the morning, right? That's probably the first thing that Massenet determined. If it's dawn, out in open country, things are quiet. They move slow, if they move at all. Then the music has to reflect that, right? Here's what he came up with, and I think it's very clever. Now, without getting into too much technical jargon, these chords are played exclusively by the strings in the orchestra, first of all. They have a certain flavor. It's actually the way the chords are built internally, as well as the way they move from one another. If I separate my hands on the piano and put it very, very simply, the right hand, representing the violins and the upper strings in the orchestra, they go up. while simultaneously the left hand, representing the lower strings, the violas, cellos, and basses, go down and then up. This motion of opposites produces a, a special kind of sound that gives our ears a feeling of space or emptiness. It's what probably communicates to our ears that we're out in the open, the plains in Spain, if you will, that sort of thing. The slow movement of these chords almost describes the motion of clouds or mist. Maybe I'm inferring too much, but another choice that speaks misty to me is the fact that when Massenet orchestrated this music, he decided that the strings should play very, very softly. That gives the strings a kind of faraway sound, as if we're looking at an object through a scrim or through actual mist. Now, while that activity is going on in the strings, a few bars into the scene, we hear a little melody from the woodwinds. Because of the slow, quiet, chordal activity in the strings, this melody really stands out. It actually has the flavor of a country melody, a melody one might hear being played by a shepherd or a, a goat herder on his flute out on a hillside. Now, the black and white color of the piano doesn't really do that passage justice, so again, let's listen to a recording of this same music. I think you'll agree that it says dawn, open country, even misty. All the things that the libretto, the story, requires. The opening of Act 3 describes a completely different place and a different time of day. We're in the Sierra, a craggy mountain pass, and it's sunset, perhaps the end of the same day. 
This is the scene where Quixote encounters a band of thieves who stole Dulcinea's pearl necklace, and he's out to retrieve it. So danger's in the air, as well as the enveloping darkness of night. When the curtain opens, Quixote is on all fours inspecting the ground for any indication of the recent presence of the robbers. This was probably an easier chore for Massenet because dark always seems to equate with the minor mode as opposed to major, and he gives the music first to the brass choir. The music is then repeated by the strings an octave higher. And then the passage is played again an octave higher than that, this time played by the woodwinds giving emphasis to the darkness. He then modulates to a different key and repeats that whole process over again. This leap up an octave each time the passage is repeated helps our minds to see the darkness, the mountains, the sunset, the danger that may be lurking behind the next crevice as Quixote explores the space. Let's listen to it again in the orchestral version. So that's an example of how a great composer creates atmosphere, actually sets the scene in much the same way as a scenic designer might approach the design of a theatrical set, or a movie director might choose a location and a particular way of shooting and lighting that location. In a way, every note, every chord, every instrument at the disposal of the composer of an opera has a different color and can take on a different meaning within the context of a dramatic story. It's part of the mystery of the music in an opera and in the operas of our season 2014. I'll see you at the opera. <laughs> Ne